Hi everybody, I'm Blake Robinson. I am the creator of The Cravings Cure and I'm gonna be walking you through how to understand your cravings, understand them from a physiological level, from a um, psychological level, but most importantly, what, if anything, you can do about it. And uh, so let's go ahead and jump into it. And uh, remember, as always, if you ever have any questions or anything, if you'd like to know anything more, go ahead and reach out at shiftcollective at gmail.com. That's shift, S-H-F-T, collective at gmail.com, or jump into the uh, one of the free Facebook groups and you'll be able to learn even more and find even more amazing content just like this. So with that being said, let's actually jump into it. And this right here, so is what we're going to be discussing today. This is the cravings cure. Now, where do cravings come from? Um, how to manage them? I mean, we're going to be going through all of that and also how to give in every now and then and actually still continue to see results. So like I said, my name is Blake Robinson and I am a certified strength and conditioning specialist, but I am also an advanced certified nutritionist and have been working in this industry for over 15 years and I love it. And selfishly, um, I love helping people and I find a lot of fulfillment and a lot of happiness through that. So there's a bit of this that this is a little bit selfish for me because I know that this is going to help you and going to help you reach your goals. And um, I want you to do that and want you to make the minimum amount of change necessary to get to where you wanna be. The reason I say that is because that will increase your consistency, your adherence, and make it so much easier for you to continue to see results your entire life. So what is a craving? Why do we get them? What are some of the possible causes of those cravings and some strategies of how to deal with them? And also having that conversation of, do you have to give them up? And then also understanding the craving cycle as well of how that functions. So a craving, it literally is an intense desire to consume a food. And it's different than normal hunger. Like there's boredom hunger, and I think that that's something that is interesting to identify. There's being bored and just being hungry, which happens to a lot of us when there's a, when there's not a lot going on. But this is something that's different. This is a craving. This is something that is selective hunger. It's something that's beyond just regularly being hungry. And it may or may not be related to specific hunger. And the drive to consume particular nutrients is also something that is really well established and understood in animals and in human beings. So the most popular cravings, the ones that we see the most are chocolate, breads, um, sugary breads even, and then uh, sugared beverages like soda, and then also looking at fried items, okay? Fried or oily, fatty things. So those are usually at the top of the list. Chocolate can happen. Now, from a physiological standpoint, one of the reasons you might be craving chocolate can be because there is a um, nutrient deficiency of magnesium. And magnesium is a nutrient in the body that is like, it, it's essential for everything. It's involved in so many different processes of the body, including regulating muscle, uh, nerve function, blood sugar levels, blood pressure, making protein, bone, making proteins, bones, and even DNA. So it is an essential micronutrient or a nutrient that we need in our bodies at all times. So this is the physiological reasoning of why we might be craving chocolate. Now there are some physical reasons as well that we'll talk about a little bit later, but right now we're gonna dive into the physiological reasons of each one of these. Bread cravings, those are linked to an absence of nitrogen in the diet. And so your body needs that nitrogen to make a lot of the tissues, the skin, your muscle, your blood, your hair, your nails, and foods that are really high in nitrogen are meats, fishes, legumes, nuts, eggs, milks, usually things that are more on the spectrum of like uh, protein uh, supplement, or sorry, protein items or animal-based proteins or plant-based proteins, things that are like along those lines, like the legumes, the proteins, the meats, all of that stuff is going to make a big difference and help with that craving. Okay, next one, sodas or even those kind of oily snacks, they're symptoms of a calcium shortage. Okay, you have more calcium in your body than any other material. And it makes up so much of your bones, your teeth, and obviously it also plays part in your heart health and your function, muscle function. So it's something that you definitely do need. Um, the soda as well is something that can be a challenge to overcome because it is something that is very divisive and it's easy. And there's usually a lot of calories that are usually packed into those sugary drinks. Salty foods. Unsurprisingly, <laughs> you probably saw this coming. It's a symptom of needing more sodium. It helps our muscles contract. Sodium helps to um, send nerve impulses throughout our bodies and helps to regulate our fluid balance so that we don't get de dehydrated so we avoid muscle cramps. However, the actual amount of sodium that is recommended for an individual in a day is a teaspoon. And the thing is, is that those 
the sodium and the salt, those things really do get into everything. Anything that's preserved, anything that's held over, anything that comes out of a can, there usually has to have has to be a preservative. And salt is one of the best known, highly used, and well known preservatives that exists. And so usually, oddly enough, if you're craving those salty foods, it's because of the sodium that you might be deficient in. Okay. So that's the physiological, like those are the things like if we have div nutrient deficiencies that can cause us to have those cravings. But what are other reasons? We have boredom, just being bored because it's there and it's in front of you. Having deficiency, like we talked about, emotions can also be a reason why we feel a craving, like whether it can be a stressful emotion or even looking for that comfort. Hormones can also have an impact on that. And then thirst is a big factor. And one of the last ones that we'll talk about that is one of the biggest things that you over have, that you have control over is the location or even the environment. So this right here, this is talking a lot about that boredom or location and environment. This is what it looks like a crave cycle, or even just looking at it from the standpoint of it being a habit or a routine is that what happens is that there is a trigger, there is a routine and there is a reward. It works in those three things and that happens all the time. You've heard the most basic example that most everybody knows about is um, Pavlov's dogs where he would ring a bell, the dogs would be given food or the dogs would come over and the dogs would be given food. There was a trigger, there was the actual bell itself, there was a routine of the dogs coming over to get food and the reward was they got food. What happened eventually is that the trigger stimulated the dogs to actually salivate without the presence of food. So they basically were receiving the same stimulus, but without the actual routine of getting the food. What we want to look at is that there are um, emotional states, there are environments, there's locations, there are even people that we associate with specific cravings or foods. Like I have uh, strong associations with Utah and with um, what's called a crown burger, which is a gigantic pastrami hamburger. And it was kind of this thing that I had that association that anytime I came over and visited Utah, that it was like, oh, we get a crown burger. That was a routine. And the reward that we're looking for is never, it's usually rarely ever something that is a negative or something that feels bad. Like most of the time, like we don't associate um, success or pleasure or happiness with um, a negative, negative outcome. So usually we have a feeling of contentment. We have a feeling of happiness. We have a feeling of just being fulfilled, of being satisfied, whether that can be from an emotional standpoint or even from a caloric standpoint. So the routine sometimes is what need, well, the routine needs to be adjusted and changed. If we can affect and remove the trigger, we should remove it. So maybe you can't quit your job, but you might be able to move desks or not go past the snack drawer every single, or the snack room every single time you go to get a drink of water or go to use the restroom. So you can change up that trigger and you can remove that so that you can give yourself a different routine. And the biggest thing that we want to do is we still want to make sure that we are doing and performing a routine that's giving us a similar outcome, a similar reward. Okay. So instead of me eating uh, five chocolate bars, maybe it's instead I go outside and I go for a walk that still makes me feel calm. It makes me feel like mental clarity and then I can focus and function. So that's a different routine. That's still going to give me the same reward. Obviously I'm not equating to chocolate to walking. Okay. But you get the idea of what the routine can be and how you can change it. So let's talk about the eight ways to actually eliminate to actually to get rid of the cravings themselves. One, drink more. Two, eat more. Three, run it down. Four, get a hobby. Five, protein bro. Six, mastication. And seven, I'd rather. And the final one is the eighth, which we'll talk about as soon as we get through it. So number one, drink more water. Some of the times our body misinterprets thirst for hunger. And so you might actually be thirsty and not necessarily hungry. So water is one of the best ways to drown those cravings, especially those that are telling you you need those salty snacks. Okay, even if you are well hydrated, we can still misinterpret the need for water for the need for food. Okay, eating more. So simple sounds really simple, and it sounds like wait a second, you're telling me to fight off the craving. I should be eating more. Now you can snack more and lose weight. Okay, the secret is getting your snacks and the timing of those snacks right by providing your body with a healthy, nutritious snack before the cravings hit. You're actually being proactive. You're taking control. You are not being reactive and responding to those signals or those locations or whatever the case may be. Run it down. Okay. The people that say that exercise makes them hungry, maybe that's a personal thing that they experience and maybe that might be you. But studies have shown that one of the best ways to bust that appetite is with cardio. 
So they've proven that just 20 minutes of exercise before a meal results in actually eating less than if you had done nothing at all. Number four, boredom. <laughs> this one happens all the time. And this is, this I think is one of the major contributors. So food is often a substitute for other areas of our lives where we feel we're not fulfilled. Whether it's being cooped up in the door indoors for too long, feeling unmotivated at work, being in an unfulfilling relationship, or simply a lack of exercise. All of that can result in really strong cravings. So get a hobby. Keep yourself from getting bored. Find some people to be around or find something else to do. Protein is a great way to control your appetite. Okay, It stimulates the production of CKK, a natural appetite suppressant. So just by having protein, you're actually causing yourself to have less of an appetite. If you find yourself constantly hungry and struggling, this is a great way to actually curb that appetite. Okay, It's key for both suppressing it and for adding, aiding in weight loss itself. Mastication, gum, chewing, finding something that is low caloric or even something that matches with what your goals are and chewing on that. So that is one of the best ways that you can actually handle that. Chewing is also one of the really great ways to actually help you to eliminate hunger as well. So even just chewing gum, like even chewing gum for an hour a day actually helps with the production of ghrelin. Okay. So your brain slows down the production of ghrelin. Ghrelin is one of those uh, hormones that actually causes your body to be hungry, to crave food. So just by having a little bit of gum, something that's around with you, that's a great way to do it. Sugar-free, sugar, a little bit of sugar in it, okay? You're going to be so much better off if you have that little bit of gum that'll be around to help out. Number seven, I'd rather. That phrase of I'd rather insert blank than... Uh, given to the cravings, or I'd rather have a six pack than this, or I'd rather making sure that you're keeping in front of your mind what it is that you're trying to accomplish and what it is you're trying to change. Get out. I'd rather. That is a wonderful phrase that you can use on a regular basis to refocus yourself on what your goals are. So focusing with your end goal in mind and always remembering what your motivation is. Sometimes having your motivation um, as the wallpaper on your phone, um, in your car, stickers, constantly being reminding of, reminded of what it is that you're actually trying to accomplish, okay? Swapping... A lot of that has to do with making sure that you remember your motivation. So I found that the phrase that I'd rather, like I'd rather have plenty of energy than uh, ruin it with this, uh, with, <laughs> with these donuts, or I'd rather feel uh, healthier and stronger throughout the day, or I'd rather look great in the bikini than uh, this, than make this bad food choice. Like it's constantly reminding yourself of what that motivation is and what's keeping you there. And my favorite one, which is the final one, which is one of the eight ways to eliminate those cravings, don't. <laughs> okay. Now, sometimes it's okay to give in. Sometimes it's okay uh, to have a food that doesn't necessarily match exactly with what your goals are. And if your goal is a lifestyle, telling yourself that you're never going to have a specific food for the rest of your life, that can be quite challenging. So avoid falling into the trap of making lists of good or evil foods or telling yourself that you can't have something or saying, oh, I will, I can't have this because I'm, you know, I'm working on my strength or I can't have this because I want to make sure that I have toned arms. As soon as you start doing that, you give that food that much more power. So you need to understand instead of simply saying like, I can't have this and this is bad and this is evil. Sometimes it's okay to just have the donut. Okay. And to fill that ear, fill that urge or to fill that craving and that you know that if you've got that little bit of wiggle room within your calories, which we usually do if we're t paying attention and doing a good job of it, then you're going to be just fine. So at certain times, don't avoid the craving. Okay. In fact, you might be better off afterwards just by letting yourself give in. Now, please understand, I'm not giving you permission to go nuts and completely and have, you know, the entire box of donuts. Okay. But just to give you a comparison and an understanding, having a large apple or having a glazed donut. Okay. Calorically, there's a 70 calorie difference. Protein, you actually get more protein out of the glazed donut. There are more carbohydrates in the apple and there is more fat in the donut. Now, Obviously, 
a donut and an apple are not going to be the same thing. There's obviously more micronutrients, but just from a surface level understanding of worrying about the calories, the proteins, the carbs, and the fats, like they're not that, all that different. And that's one of the things is that, yeah, you can look at it from a caloric standpoint. And if you have a little bit of wiggle room, then you can actually still do those calories as well. So please don't misquote me. I did not say that an apple and a glazed donut are nutritionally equivalent, but sometimes you just need a donut. And that's okay. In fact, that's great. It's called balance. Now, going through that craving cure, like we just talked about, what's a craving? Why do we get them? The physiological reasons, the social reasons, some of the possible causes from an environmental standpoint, all the way to looking at it from the way that we have uh, deficiencies in our body. Mm hmm. Okay, so we finished and we've gone through the entire craving cure. We've talked about what a craving is. We talked about why we get them. We talked about all the different possible causes and strategies specifically about how to deal with them. And so from the standpoint of actually having the things or trying to eliminate them, using gum, running, water, different snacks, all kinds of different things that you can use to actually to combat or to eliminate those cravings. So also talking about, do you have to give them up? and about understanding how that cycle works and why we have those cravings. So with all of that, one of the things that I hope that you understand is why you have those cravings and where they're coming from, but more specifically, how you can actually handle them, how you can uh, approach them, and also don't fall into that trap of trying to label foods as good or bad. Just have an understanding of what that craving is. And then if you'd like, there's a download below that you'll be able to click a link and it'll actually walk you through basically a cravings elimination guide of helping you to identify what the craving is, trying to understand if it's an environmental, if it's a situational, and giving you a specific tool set that you can really easily download and start tracking and monitoring and actually changing your cravings. So if you'd like that, go ahead and click the link down below. And as always, I'm Blake Robinson and um, helping you with as always, I'm Blake Robinson. I hope that this has been helpful for you. If you ever are interested in learning more about working with me um, specifically or even looking into a specific program that's going to be able to help you with your specific uh, with your specific goal, if you're looking for a specific program that's going to be able to help you with your specific goal, go ahead and take a look. Uh, there are a series of different programs and offerings that we have as far as what can be helping you with starting your fat loss journey. Or if you're at the very final end of just your last 10 to 15 pounds, if you're trying to get lean, or if you feel like your metabolism is not what it used to be, or if you're even understanding how to understand um, your gut biome and how your body actually functions and processes food, you can find out more. Um, you can go ahead and actually message me here, or you can get more information just by commenting below. But thank you so much for taking the time and for participating and watching The Cravings Cure. I hope it's been incredibly helpful for you, and have a wonderful day. And if you are interested, there are a series of programs that I do have that offer um, the PDFs and the, these specific systems for starting your fat loss program or even looking into resetting and reorganizing your guts to helping to fix and correct your metabolism, uh, lean muscle program, the habit transformation program, or the final fat loss program when you're down to your last 10 to 15 pounds, or even the bullet bulletproof gut program. All of these are very specific and these are more of the antithesis uh, to people that hate PDFs. Because while there are PDFs and there are guides that you're going to be able to download and tons of tools and recipes that come along with each one of these programs, it's more specifically of you're going to have interaction with a coach who's going to be helping you, who's going to be coaching you, who's going to be checking in with you. It is not going to be a matter of click, download, and best of luck. This is going to be somebody who's going to be at your side helping you, dragging you along at sometimes, kicking you in the butt when it's necessary, but also helping you understand your nutrition, master it, and make it work for you. So if you're interested in any of those, let me know. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks.